So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have Dee Sin uh, Labs on the webcast today joining us uh, to talk about auto logout and session limit modules. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Lauren. I work for the Drupal Association as our community outreach coordinator. Um, so I run our webcasts as well as our global training days and other uh, educational uh, programs. If you're listening from your computer, uh, make sure to select the mic and speaker audio option. Um, it's easier sometimes to wear a headset, though up to you. You'll be muted during the call. So um, that means that you can ask any questions or comments through our Q&A window. We're not using the chat option today. And please feel free to take our post webinar survey. We really like to know um, how we can improve things and uh, make sure that we give the best product to our community. Just a little bit about the Drupal Association. Um, obviously, uh, you know, these, these are our big programs, Drupal.org improvements. We uh, host Drupal.org. We also host a little thing called DrupalCon, uh, a huge event we have in North America um, coming up in May of 2015. Uh, we have one coming up in just a few weeks, actually, in Amsterdam. Uh, and then we have, of course, our new uh, exciting program happening in Latin America in Bogota in, 20, uh, in February 2015. Uh, we also have community grants that we uh, help with other emerging communities to get them started on uh, some of their Drupal projects. And then, of course, we have Global Training Days, which is um, a free or low cost intro to Drupal training that a lot of Drupal shops host. And it's a really great educational resource to spread the word about Drupal globally. Just a few reminders of things that are coming up. We have, obviously, DrupalCon Amsterdam coming up in a couple of weeks. We have um, our Drupal Global Training Days. You can find out more um, at drupal.org, uh, learn Drupal. And then, of course, we always have ongoing webcasts. And you can see the link there and uh, check out what we have coming up. And we just want to thank uh, Decent Labs and all of our supporting partners. Um, they make it possible for us to really provide these wonderful educational uh, resources to you guys, as well as supporting the program and uh, the project as well. So thank you. And without further ado, a little bit about our presenter, John. John is a solutions architect at Decent Online. Um, he's a member of the UK's Institution of Engineering and Technology and a chartered engineer. Um, and it, it, John likes really strong tea, so that's fantastic. Hopefully, we'll, he won't need any to get, get uh, started on this webinar. So uh, without further ado, John, I'm going to switch the presenter mode to you so you can start the presentation. Okay. Can you see my screen? Um, yes. OK. Can you see that? Is the Drupal site? Yep. Yeah, OK. Oh, thanks very much, Lauren. Um, so yeah, this today's um, webinar has uh, got a security theme. Um, I'm going to be looking at a couple of um, add-on modules for Drupal 7 to um, really beef up the security of the site, but uh, it's, it's about uh, applying uh, organizational security policies to, to your websites. Um, and so the, the modules we'll be looking at are the auto logout module, which um, limits the amount of time a user can remain inactive on the website. We'll be looking at the session limit module, which uh, limits the number of uh, times a user can log in simultaneously to the same site. Um, and then I'll cover a little bit of the password policy module, which allows you to apply your organizational's password uh, policy to the to the Drupal website. Um, we'll be looking at some settings within the flood control module, uh, and also uh, the security review module, which helps you to uh, look for some common misconfigurations in your Drupal 7 website. So I'll start with the auto logout module. Our auto logout can be found on Drupal.org at Drupal.org slash project slash auto logout. 
Uh, if you'd like to test that out, there's a link straight here for, to uh, simplytest.me, which enables the site with the auto logout module already enabled, and you can follow through the instructions on there uh, that you'll be going through today. So in order to enable the auto logout module, you will do that from the modules menu. Um, and auto logout also has an integration with a second module called JS Timer, which can be downloaded from drupal.org slash project slash JS Timer. The JavaScript Timer module, um, we'll, we'll see how that's worked using a moment, but it allows you to put a, a, a clock on the site, which shows how much time a user's got left. Uh, they remain inactive. With the auto logout module and JS Timer modules enabled, you can configure the auto logout module from the main configuration menu. Um, and then the auto logout option under people. The auto logout settings are here. Uh, the first one is the number of seconds that a user may remain inactive on the website. This is the general setting, and 1800 seconds is the default. This equates to 30 minutes on the site. Some users are able to set their own auto logout settings up to a maximum, which you can provide here. When a user's session is about to expire, um, they will get a pop-up alert asking them if they wish to continue their session um, and the amount of time that pop-up alert remains active on the screen for is specified here in seconds. So this is 10 seconds. The auto logout module allows you to specify uh, auto uh, logout times per role. So the authenticated user here is given 60 seconds, which is the minimum amount of time a user is allowed to have. Uh, and the administrator, anyone with the administrator role is given 1800 seconds here, that's 30 minutes again. You'll be able to set um, the met some of the messaging as well on the module that pops up. So with the configuration settings saved, I'll return to the configuration screen. And because we're going to put the timer on the page, we'll have a look at the JavaScript timer settings. The JavaScript timer setting just needs this one setting set, which is that it should load the JavaScript on every page. And if I look at my uh, administrator's settings, they will get a new um, setting here, which means they can set their logout threshold themselves. Um, so the user one is set to 3,600 seconds. This is one hour. And with these settings saved, whenever you're on the site, on the left-hand side here, we have a block, which you can add from the structure blocks menu. And it shows you the amount of time you have remaining within your session. So the uh, user one administrator has 59, uh, 59 minutes remaining now. As you browse your site, this timer is reset, and there's also a button there for resetting the timer. If I now log out of the site, I'll log out in as a test user. The test user was only given, uh, is only an authenticated user and has only 60 seconds for their uh, period of inactivity. So we'll be able to see when this timer counts down uh, what the logout uh, prompt looks like. Uh, this is a good time to talk about some of the other features of the auto logout module. Um, the JavaScript that includes in the auto logout module will detect if a user is working on a form. So if there is a particularly long form, uh, each time they interact with the form element, the, JavaScript, the, the timer on the server side will be reset, um, which means that if they have a, a form that may take many minutes to complete, it doesn't log them out after, after them working on that for an amount of time. The, the auto logout module also works across tabs. So if you're working in multiple tabs on the same site, as long as you're active on one of those tabs, you will not be logged out of the site. So we have a, a few seconds remaining uh, of inactivity on this particular site. When this counts down to zero, we will then get a pop-up alert asking if you want to remain on the site. If we say yes, we'll be returned to it. If we say no, or we don't press it within the 10 second window, um, the user will be logged logged out and they'll get a message. When they return to their computer, they will get they will see that they have been logged out of the site. So that's the auto logout module. The next module I'd like to uh, go over is the session limit module. This can be found on drupal.org under drupal.org slash project slash session, session underscore limit. The session limit module allows uh, the site administrator to restrict the number of active sessions a user can have on the site. So I will start by disabling the auto logout module. And then we will enable, make sure the session limit module is enabled.
to configure the session limit module, follow the links from the configuration menu, and then session limit under people. The first option is the number of default maximum sessions, uh, uh, sessions a user can have, uh, which is set to one. Um, this allows the user to log in once on one computer. If they then log in more than one time, the following actions may take place. Uh, the default is do nothing. This is the Drupal 7 default action. This will allow a uh, user to log in um, to as many work consoles as they, uh, as many sessions as they like on the website. The second option, automatically drop the oldest session without prompting. Um, if they were to log in uh, at home and then they logged in again when they came to work, the session that was logged in at home, being the oldest, would then be logged out. And so uh, it couldn't be left unattended. The final session uh, setting is the prevent new session. With this setting set, if a user is logged in somewhere uh, at Workstation 1, if they try and log in again at the Workstation 2, they will be prevented until they've logged out of the first. If I save these settings, we'll demonstrate how that works. So we'll start by logging out of the site, and I'll log in as the test user. Because this is the first session, the test user is allowed to log straight in and navigate around the site without any problems. They are logged in. In order to demonstrate the abilities of the session uh, limit module, I will use a feature within Google Chrome called the incognito window. The incognito window uh, works separately to um, the other uh, Google Chrome window. Which means the sessions aren't stored between them. Uh, in this session, in this window, I'm not logged in. If I now try and log in, because I haven't logged in, uh, logged out of the first one, I'm prevented from logging in, and I see a session limit warning. I must go back to my first session and log out. Now that I'm logged out of the first session, I can switch back to the incognito window, and I should now be able to log into the site. I'm no longer prevented from logging in. So that was the session limit module. The next module I'd like to look at is the password policy module. The password policy module allows the site administrator to apply an organization's password policy to their Drupal 7 website. Drupal, 7's, uh, Drupal 7 by default does not have a password policy as such. Although you must have a password, it doesn't specify a minimum length or complexity. The password policy can be configured from the configuration menu and then password policies under people. The initial settings screen has a few options on it that are useful. The first one is the forced password change on reset so that when a user um, ask for a password reset when they've forgotten their password. Uh, Drupal 7's default action uh, is to um, allow them to navigate the site once they follow the password reset, reset link and they may not have reset their password. By ticking this option, you can enforce that once they, if they have forgotten their password, they are forced to reset it to a new one. In order to set a password policy, you will use the list tab at the top. Uh, this site currently has no password policies applied. We'll click to add a new one. The password policy needs a name and a description. You can then decide the roles that this that will apply. This policy will be applied to. So this this allows you to create uh, multiple password policies and apply different ones to different roles. We will be applying this to the authenticated user. Um, the expiration ses session allows you to specify the number of days that uh, a user's password uh, lasts for before it expires. So perhaps we'll set it for 90 days. In the expiration warning, you can set the number of days before the expiration date that the user will be reminded to change their password. Uh, they will receive an email for this. Under the constraints section, we'll be able to apply the password constraints, uh, which applies the policy to the, pass uh, to the passwords that people choose. There are many settings in here which can be looked at later, um, but some default ones um, are perhaps uh, a password must have at least one digit, it must have a length of six, must contain at least one letter, and one piece of punctuation. We can also specify that the password cannot be the same as the username. 
or cannot contain the username by setting a one in this value in this box. Um, the history option here allows you to specify that the password cannot be the same as the previous um, X number of passwords. So if we put one in there, it cannot be the same as the previous password. Now that the policy has been created, we must enable it by ticking the enable box. If you now want to ensure that all users of the site um, reset their password um, in order to ab abide by this policy, we can click the tab to force a password change. We can ensure that users must change their password on first time login, and we can ensure that all authenticated users are told they must reset their password uh, at, at their next login. If I was to now log out of the site, and I shall log in as the test user again. The test user is told that their password has expired and they must change it to proceed on the site. If they try and navigate away, they're brought back to the edit screen, which is where they must reset their password. After typing in their current password, they must then type in their password and confirm their new password and confirm it. The password complexity settings we put on the previous page are shown below, and these replace the standard set the standard text that Drupal ordinarily prints out here. Each of the failures of the password is displayed below. Here I've placed the same password as before, and in fact it is the same as the username. All of these things have been accounted for in the information underneath, uh, allowing users to understand what they have done wrong with their password. This time I've put a, a more complex password that didn't match the previous. It does have capitals, numbers and letters and punctuation, um, but it does contain the username. And so the password policy module has noticed this and forbids this password. Once you've selected a good password and press save, the module then allows you to navigate around the site. The next module I'd like to look at is a small one uh, called Flood Control. Drupal 7 by default has Flood Control built in. Flood Control prevents the site from being hacked by, by a brute force where someone knows the username and continuously tries to log in by trying different variations from a part of the password. After a certain number of login, failed login attempts, Flood Control kicks in and locks that, uh, that attacker out of the site and prevents them from uh, using the login form, uh, prevents them from trying to log in any further. These settings are hidden uh, under the hood in Drupal 7 by default, and the flood control module simply provides uh, an easy way of accessing it. It can be found on drupal.org under drupal.org slash project slash flood underscore control. After logging into the site, the flood control settings can be found under configuration and under, under system flood control. Here are the settings. The failed login IP limit uh, restricts the number of failed login attempts from a, a particular IP or network address um, over the course of a time window, which is the default is set to one hour. The failed login username limit means that only five, in this case, only five failed logins can be provided by the same user over a six hour period. It may be that for your particular use case, your particular site, your clients, um, on your organization, these settings aren't appropriate and the flood, and the flood control module allows you to customize them for your particular organization's requirements. The final module I was going to look at today is the security re review module. And the security review module um, provides some simple ways of checking for misconfiguration of your website um, which can cause security problems. After an eight, the security review module can be found on drupal.org at drupal.org slash project slash security underscore review. After enabling the security review module, it can be configured under the configuration menu. Uh, and sorry, the, the reports can be found under the reports menu and then security review. In order to review your site for the first time, you press the run checklist button and this checks your site for various common security uh, vulnerabilities and configuration fails. Listed underneath in the report, anything red should be something you should be concerned about and something that uh, should be corrected in order to make your site secure. One example here is the errors are written to the screen. In its default configuration, Drupal will print error messages to the screen, which normal users can see. Sometimes these error messages contain security 
uh, contains information which would allow an attacker to gain access to your site. By following the links through, we get to the error message configuration screen, where we can then turn off these messages. If, if this was the live, live site, this is what we should be doing. If we then return to the security review page and rerun the tests, and we shall see the errors written to the screen problem should now have corrected itself. The second place for looking for security vulnerabilities on your site is the standard status report menu. This provides a variety of information across your site and anything marked as either uh, yellow or red is something that you should look into. One of the main ones to look at is the site uh, module information to see what modules are enabled on your site and which modules are out of date. Any listed as red uh, will have a security patch on Drupal.org and should be updated immediately. Well, thank you for uh, listening. That's uh, taken me through the modules I wanted to talk about today. Um, I'll pass back to Lauren if there are any questions. Um, we don't have any questions just yet, so I'm going to ask a question really quickly. Um, if you have any concerns with security as far as you know the the you know features you showed us today where can you find more information um, just to follow up and get uh, a little bit more as far as detail for what you talked about um, so the module pages are the best place to look I think for um, uh, particular information about the modules I've talked about today um, the issue queues on drupal.org are a very good place to ask uh, ask questions so if there's not uh, an obvious solution to the problem if you uh, ask your question on the issue queue for the module um, in question then the maintainer should be able to get back to you uh, and give you information on how to solve that particular problem um, in terms of things like security there's um, uh, announcements from uh, the security team at Drupal, uh, which is available from Drupal.org that you can sign up to the mailing list there um, in order to get the latest security announcements and if a module you're using on your site is mentioned in the security announcements you know that's the best time to go ahead and, um, uh, and, and upgrade those modules to make sure you have the latest versions of them. Awesome, that's really helpful, thank you. Um, we have a couple questions coming in, John. Is there a limit to how many security modules um, one should enable? Um, there's, there's no specific limit. Um, there's no limit to any, they're no different from any other type of module um, on the site. Um, most of the ones we covered today aren't specifically security, they're not going to improve the security of the site as such. They're more, they're more about um, uh, applying organizational policy. So. Um, if the policy is that you should be logged out after an activity, which which will make your site safer, because if you leave your site unattended, um, your logged in session unattended, somebody else could then use it. Then things like the auto logout module and session limit modules are, um, are are good things to use. So really, it's about understanding your security policies, um, either of the organisation or if you're a client, you're an agency of the clients you're working with, to make sure that um, you're, you're you're applying the. the the correct modules um, that allow those security policies to be uh, to be fulfilled. Great, thank you. Um, the next question: If you turn off the error messages, will the messages for invalid entries on web forms still be printed? Uh, yes. So there's, there's, that's the that's the, the kind of secure um, development the development error messages that we're turning off on that particular form. So it's not the same as um, you, you put in a, a new um, field on this form. Um, it's about printing development errors. Um, and like I said, the default configuration of Drupal 7 will print those out to the screen. So unless you do that that setting within the configuration menus, um, you, will, you, you, you might be printing out information that um, uh, the user shouldn't be seeing. Great. Um, another question. Any advice for brute force logins when spammers regularly change their IPs? Um, it, yeah, that's a difficult one because um, the brute force logins can uh, can be seen as either uh, spam problems or they can be seen as denial of service problems. Um, denial of service 
if it's a denial of service problem, then I think you've got a, a bigger problem if the, the website's actually being um, slowed down by the number, by the amount of people trying to log in. Um, then you need to look at ways to circumvent that uh, via improving um, either infrastructure or um, potentially putting things out like your resources out onto CDNs and, and the like, which better spread the load balance. Um, in terms of trying to get away from the spammers um, and filling in spam forms, um, things like the capture module um, that do things to check that uh, the person that is uh, trying to log into the site is, a, is an actual person. Um, there's other modules like that, um, so that was capture, but there's also Honeypot is also a very good module as well, um, which helps to identify that the person trying to log into your site is actually a spammer and not a real person. Um, and there's uh, commercial offerings as well, and the likes of uh, Mollum, um, which can do go a little bit further, where they don't prevent present the capture to start with, but if what's been filled in, for instance, if it's the comment form, they, um, Mollum will make an, an intelligent assessment as to whether the person who filled, who have filled it in is a person or not. Uh, and if they're not, they will then present them with the capture to go uh, to be able to uh, submit it. So there's there's a number of ways you can you can you can look into uh, protecting your site against spam, um, and, and there's a couple of them there. Great, thanks, John. Um, the person that asked that question has actually a follow-up comment that says um, captures aren't available in the login form. I'm pretty sure you can uh, apply the capture to the login form. Um, so I think if you have a, a I can't think of a particular resource to go to straight now, but I've definitely seen captures um, embedded into um, most forms on the site that will allow you to do that. Um, but maybe, we, maybe we can look, look that up and, and put the uh, post information up afterwards. Great. Um, awesome. So thanks, John. Uh, the rest of our comments are just uh, thank yous for sharing sharing your advice on um, all these security uh, situations and um, if we don't have any further questions looks like we don't uh, just a reminder again coming up we have some programs uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam is uh, this month you can still register to attend um, the information is uh, at Amsterdam 2014 triple.org we have our Drupal Global Training Dates, the last of this year, November 14th. Um, you can find out more about uh, hosting or participating in some form um, on our website. It's, again, uh, low cost or free intro to Drupal training for our, um, for our newbie Drupal uh, developers. And uh, last but not least, we have a list of our webcasts coming up. Um, at association.drupal.org slash webcasts. So you can see what's coming down the pike. We're a little uh, quiet in the rest of September. Obviously, uh, we'll be getting ready for Amsterdam and be traveling, but we'll pick up back again in uh, October and have a lot of stuff uh, of interest for you guys. And uh, just as a last reminder, um, we couldn't do what we do, help fund scholarships, grants, and servers without our organization members and individual memberships. So uh, check out our membership page and um, you can see all of the information on what that entails uh, at our link below. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and. Uh, this will be recorded and put on YouTube um, in the next couple of days. Don't forget to take your survey. And of course, thank you, John, um, and thank you, Deason, for hosting the webinar today. Thank you, and have a good day.